I know it doesn't look like a normal lasagna, but then you taste it, and it doesn't taste like a normal lasagna. It tastes like heaven. I don't know why people put so many like vegetables and wetness in their lasagna. To me, lasagna is still a pasta dish, and it should be a lot of delicious pasta. So when I make lasagna, I play for keeps. I'm gonna do a veg one today. I just wanna like focus on two kind of theme principles. I'm gonna go fine sheets, but lots of layers. And drier than you think. Pasta, bechamel, cheese, tons of spinach and basil. We'll do a little tomato too, and then repeat. Super yummy. And there's gonna be a bonus tip and trick in the end, because you've been eating lasagna wrong and you didn't know that. So I'm gonna start with the dough. We've got pasta recipes on Chef Steps, so do you really want to see me make dough again right here? Sean is saying yes. Okay, I will put this dough aside for now. Should we do the, the mixer or the old school? We, ba we barely do anything old school at Chef Steps, so let's do old school real quick. I'm gonna hold back, whoop, one egg. There's a good reason to do the old school kind of countertop method, and you get like really smooth, smooth dough this way. Right now it's whole eggs, and I know there's probably a lot of pasta chefs who are like, ah, oh, you gotta do all egg yolks, and then water, and da 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 da. But when I'm at home, I don't necessarily always like to have like a bunch of egg whites wasted or sitting around. This is where it all starts, with flour and egg. Once it's like a pretty homogenous ball, I'll just start rolling it. And you roll it and fold it and roll it and fold it. And that's developing all the gluten too. Looks really dry, huh? It starts to come together. There's all these like big lumps in here that are just really, really wet still. If I didn't have a, a roller, I wouldn't be doing this. I'd make sure I get it nice and smooth in a ball first. So this will just break apart a couple times. That's okay. It just starts to knead and squeeze that moisture in there and starts to get a little more even. It's a good workout. I guess you gotta choose your battles though, like if you had rested dough, four or five passes and it's done. But again, this is starting from a fresh dough. We're developing gluten and we're kneading at the same time. There's definitely some, you know, visual cues that I think are helpful. Like the actual texture on the dough, making sure it's not like rough. If the gluten's rested, it should be pretty smooth. Like the rougher the dough looks, probably just needs more time. I mentioned this when I'm making like pie, but pie dough or something like that. Make a little more than you need. Like even when you're doing a quiche or something, because having that little bit extra dough is just so nice to have that little extra forgiveness around the edges and that sort of thing, you know? This is home stretch for pasta sheets. So once I slice into it, oh man, these fine pasta layers. Oh my God, they're gonna be so good. And this is gonna be our full size lasagna sheets. Wow. The dough gods have been forgiving. It's almost like phyllo. It's like just see-through enough. I've got a good shadow because I got the light on this side, but I don't know if you guys can see that. Can you see the okay? Not the sexiest pasta sheets I ever made. But for this, they're gonna be perfect. I want to try to get 12-ish. Okay, got 12 sheets. And they don't have to be the perfect size. Um, Cause you can actually, if they're a little short too, you can go like a little bit with this one, a little bit that way with this one, and they're gonna get bigger. These will get bigger. Right now they're just like, cause all that gluten's tensed up, but they'll relax after you boil them and they're gonna slack out and get a little bit longer. I love it. We've got greens too. What I usually do at home is, uh, yeah, I mean, I'll just dunk it in my little sink with a little ice and then I just go back to any tray or bowl with a little oil or something. Did you put any salt in here? No, I am. Let's do it. So let's see here, one. Let's see if we can boil like three at a time. Two. Three. So because these are so thin, they don't need a lot of time to boil literally 60 seconds or something like that. This pasta is like so on the edge of dry that it's like, ah, oh, thank God putting in that water. You can see it changing, it's starting to like, <laughs> happy. The only other thing I'll do over here, cause I have the water going, is I'm gonna blanch all the greens. We'll go from like all this spinach to like 
one little fistful. So rather than having like sit in here a long time, just take the heat off of it. So good. Smell it. You can just throw this in the lasagna as is, but if you do, it's just gonna go black on you. Well, you blanch all sorts of things for different reasons. I'm blanching this basil to basically destroy or kill all these enzymes that are natural and alive, um, that wanna basically eat up all the good stuff, all these good aroma compounds in here. Say you have like an apple and you drop it and then it goes brown, um, but if you blanch the apple or cook it, you can't bruise it anymore, it'll never do that. Because when you drop it, you're breaking open these cells that get exposed to all these enzymes that start to naturally decompose really quickly. People say, eat your greens. I'm like, we're gonna put all this into one lasagna. We're compressing it too, so I can get more spinach in the lasagna. But I'm also doing the same thing, getting, killing those enzymes so it stays like nice and bright and spinachy the whole time. That's a lot of nutrient. <laughs> Love it. Whoa, dude, it's a lasagna party. Bechamel. It's one of the, like the classic French mother sauces that I like actually agree with. It's so useful. Every time you have like a good mac and cheese, bechamel. Butter, flour. This is classic. Um, but that fat kind of, it's a shortener. Remember we've talked about shorteners before? It's a shortener, so it shortens the gluten. So every little flour granule is now coated in fat. And that's gonna help it disperse in the milk. You only need to go this far though. I don't know, can you see that? So classic bechamel is all milk, sometimes white pepper, nutmeg, salt. I don't care about that so much. But what I do too is uh, I cut the milk with cream and it makes a really good bechamel. It's like fat says bechamel, I love it. So all you do is you basically bring this to a boil and that flour is going to hydrate, the starch in the flour is going to hydrate. It gets nice and thick and you have this velvety smooth, unctuous sauce. And that's gonna go in some of the layers. Pasta cheese, pasta cheese, pasta cheese, bechamel, tomato. Okay, so I've got the spinach and basil. Chop, 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 rough chop. That's all you need to do. Still smells like nice and vibrant, you know? Mmm. <whistles> Did you guys rock one can yesterday with that lasagna? One can of tomato? Yeah, we had, we had leftovers though, and we had cooked it down by almost half. Oh, you cooked it down by half? This whole lasagna, you know, is like, it's like finesse. So silky layer, silky layer, silky layer. And if I've got a whole tomato in there, not very silky. This is like tomato fresca. I'm not gonna cook it down. Throw the garlic in, fennel seed, this is salt, chilies. Let's just go. Our garlic's chopped. Our sauce is ready. We are cruising. Okay, let's see here. I feel like we're missing something. Cheese. Cheese. Cheese! One of the things that I learned early on working in, like when I was a kid, working in these uh, Italian restaurants, was like, they didn't I, didn't, I really didn't see any restaurants grating cheese. You know, sometimes the servers would grate cheese, like at the table, but in the back, we were grinding it. You just get a different texture. I really, really like the texture you get. So I've got mozzarella, I've got Parmesan. I'm just gonna run it through like the little KitchenAid grinder. Let's see, I don't even know if this thing can actually do Parmesan, but we're gonna find out. Oh, easy. Look at that, got that grind on that mozzarella. Mmm. You know, you can buy a bag of uh, grated cheese already. I'm, for this sort of thing where I wanted to be like, creamy and like stretchy. I don't do it because they coat it in all these different starches and anti-caking agents, which is like fine. But uh, those things brown weird and they get hard and gummy in a weird way. What? Looks like Cheetos. Doesn't it look like Cheetos? It's time to actually make lasagna. Okay, you ready Rock? Now we're gonna make lasagna. So I got my pan. I like to hit it with a little oil. 
We'll do a little bit of pasta sauce here, a little tomato sauce. I don't go crazy on any of these layers. You know, we got 12 of them. You just like a little bit of flavor. Look, it's not even like enough to really go everywhere. But this first sheet's gonna go down. Ooh. So one tip here, take one of your nice big sheets so you get total coverage on the bottom. The other ones you can kind of skimp a little bit more. Again, I'll just do tomato because we got tomato on the bottom. That's it, that's one layer. Not a lot of stuff. It starts to add up. This is why it's so good. So we do bechamel. Holy smokes. Ooh. I used to think it was crazy that I saw people putting bechamel in lasagna when I first learned how to make it. Then I had years and years of lasagna with no bechamel, and I'm like, why is all this lasagna just kind of meh? Then I went back to the bechamel. Game changer. So I've got red, white, green. So I'm gonna take about a third, because I'm gonna do three layers of this, a third of the green layer, green stuff. I'm just gonna go straight to the next layer. So uh, just FYI, this thing is gonna be like up here when we're done but when it cooks, it'll slowly sink down a bit. So don't fret that it's starting to get a little bit crazy. Okay, I've got all the layers. And now you just rinse and repeat. I know this is exactly how they make them at Costco. Because they just put so much love into the lasagna. So all I'm doing here, again, is just like, if you've ever made ravioli, you want to get the air out, because then it can puff up and souffle while you're boiling it, and then pop. That can happen with the lasagna. You guys, you're gonna go nuts for this. This is it, last one, that's 12 layers. You know, if I count the filling, we're at like 24 layers, kinda. Cheese goes on top. This is gonna go in the oven, just like this. Seems crazy. It's gonna spill a little bit, it's gonna drip, but there's gonna be so many fine layers and when you cut into it, you're gonna be like, this is insane. It's so good. That's your lasagna. Let's bake it. Arr! I gotta get a total weight on this bad boy. That's heavy. Dude, this is why I like those fine layers like this. These guys, look at even some of them are puffy and souffled. That's so good. So this lasagna's done. It's got all the layers. It's nice and roasty. You can dig into it right now, because it's ready. But we're not going to do that. What I'm gonna do is pop it in the fridge, let it chill out, slice it, and sear it for maximum flavor. We took a stab at one yesterday, just to drive home the point. Ba 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 ba. That smells good, doesn't it, buddy? <sighs> Holy smokes. That's pretty nice looking. This is what you get. The reason why I like it like this is because from here, it's gonna go in a pan. Sear, crispy, crunchy. See what I mean? Wow, baby. So good. Look at that. You see all those like crispy, crunchy seeds all embedded in there too? Doesn't that look so good already? It's gonna have like one dark, crunchy side, and you're just gonna cut right into it. It's gonna be ooey gooey on the inside. It's Whoa, gooey, man. Cause it's gonna drip and it's gonna bubble and it's gonna be like squirting out the edges. You can buy sauce in a jar. You can buy already made pasta. You can get ground cheese. You can get chopped blanched spinach in the freezer. It comes in those bricks. You think I'll eat spinach? I'm not making that up. Why do these buttons keep coming off? Now I'm trapped. You can't get that at Costco. Okay, now we've arrived to the point where you just can't get this at Costco. 